are going to finish chapter 13, and hopefully we can have some time to start uh, chapter 14. So here's the, uh, the plan for the, the rest of the semester. Uh, so after Thanksgiving, we have um, two classes. So next Monday, we will uh, finish chapter 14, and next Wednesday, uh, I will um, discuss the questions in our practice for our last exam. So probably during the Thanksgiving, I will post uh, a practice for our last exam. So it's, the, the last exam is not going to be cumulative. So it will cover chapters. I think in chapter, uh, sorry, in exam number two, we covered uh, six, seven, eight, and 10. So in the last one, in the last exam, we will cover chapters 12, uh, 13, and 14. So we will cover three, three chapters. So I will email email you the practice, and next Wednesday we will uh, work on the practice questions together. Okay, sounds good. Okay. Uh, so what else? Uh, so today we are going to continue on the uh, chapter thirteen. So last class <laughs> we worked on. I think we worked on two Excel files. One is. Um, born uh, class, so that's the first model we built. Um, do, could you please um, open that file? I think we did all the modeling, but we didn't solve it. And the other one, One we had, what's this one called again? I think it's called is, is born <coughs> class. So we use that to file that class. Uh, we finished the model, but we didn't solve it. And also the second one called I hope we also finished the model, but we didn't solve it. So does everyone have this one open? The the is for uh, class model. So basically, what we did is uh, we have two options for our investment. We can either invest in uh, townhouse or apartment buildings. So uh, we need to decide how many townhouses and how many apartment buildings we need to buy, so that we can maximize our like profit or cash flow. So we, have, we got two distinct variables, number of townhouses and number of apartments, and we got uh, objective function to maximize the cash flow. And we, have, we also have some constraints. The first one is budget constraints. Total we have, uh, I think we have two million dollars. So the total number of money that you, you spend cannot be more than two million dollars. And the time, so the manager has uh, limited amount of time to manage the properties that uh, we are going to purchase. So totally, the manager will have 140 hours and for managing each apartment, building, or um, townhouse, we have some uh, management time parameters and so we have a second constraint for the uh, management time availability. And the last one is the number of townhouses available on the market. So there are totally five uh, townhouses are available on the market. You cannot purchase more than five townhouses. So that constraint, we have to, that a function, we have to define variables, and the next one, or the last one, is to solve the, uh, the model. So let's use the solver uh, to maximize the profit or the cash flow. So after you open the solver, uh, the objective function is in there. So if you put your objective function in uh, a different place, you can just select uh, that place. So that is the objective function. Uh, and the same variables, we, we just have two different variables. Number of houses, number of uh, apartment buildings. So, <coughs> so the second area, by changing variable cells, you need to select those two different variables.
And then we need to define our constraints. The first set of constraints is, so here are the first set of constraints. So we have to make sure that the value of this cell is less than or equal to the other cell. So the money that you use should be less than or equal to two million dollars. So if we do this one, let's check how we do this one. So the first one, your selection is select <coughs> those three cells. The second one, of course you have to uh, select less than or equal to. The constraints are there, so that those are the constraints. So those are the uh, the upper bound of your report. So you just like this column and those columns for the uh, for the right hand side. So that's first constraint. So after you have the fourth constraint, we have to define the we have to define the constraint for the distinct variables. We said the distinct variables have to be integer. Four, two, or three, four, and so on so forth. They can run now be 3.3. So we have to make sure it's in, they are integer. So what we would do is to select our distinct variables. So in my uh, worksheet, it's uh, C14 and C14. After you select the two cells, or to the same variables, and then you click this one, you choose INT. So INT means integer. So you just select this one. So it will, uh, so this time it will work. So it means those two values, the same variables have to be integer. And there are a few options. So we selected the, the, the first one, int, that means integer. And the next one, the bin, so bin means binary. So we will talk about the binary variable in the next example, but I want to let you know that. If you select this one, that means uh, the constraints for the different variables are uh, binary variables. So those values have to be binary variables. So that's the second one. <coughs> The third one, the third one, D I F. Uh, so in this lecture, we are not going to use the third option, but I want to let you know what this means. That means all different. So in some cases, you want your decision variables have different value. Then we need to select the third one, D I F. It means all different. For example, if we do a uh, uh, scheduling problem. So if we want to do a scheduling problem, you have um, three projects to do. So project A, B, and C. So you have to do all of them, but you need to decide which one I need to do first, which one I need to do second, and then which one I do last. So your decision variable is that what is the sequence for the first project, what is the sequence for the second project, and what is the sequence for the third project. So the decision that you make, so let, let me say, so two, three, one, that means you do the first project C first, A second, uh, B last. So the values, all the, the values of the decision variables have to be different. In that case, you use this, that DIF option. Okay? But in this class, we are not going to uh, implement that. So here we just use this int to make sure our distinct variables are integer values. Okay, and click OK. <coughs> so this is solver we are going to use is simplex. So we do it because we are still solving the linear model, so we use the simplex model. And then if you click options, we, there's one more thing we need to do. If you click options, and um, under the all methods, there's one called integer optimality. Let's change it to, uh, to zero. Let's change it to zero. I think well, we mentioned that uh, in the last class. Let's change it to zero to make sure they have the uh, integer. So in 
questions on fall resistance? So you, you are still working on those formulas you can refer to the info that I have there.
everyone thought we did well? So, in, for the constraint, you have to put uh, the formula there in the output method. And also, in this objective function, you have to put uh, the formula first. You need to tell the Excel, here is how you calculate the, the profit. If you put a number there, it will be bad. Done. If you solve, already solved the question, please save the model. Um, so for so for uh, for the preparation of the task, you are going to need you are going to need this this model. Well, let me uh, email email everyone this file so that after class we can take a look. If you still have time to take a look for and give me the number. And the next one, please uh, open a file called ice code. <coughs> so that's the second model we we did. I think that's the one we did last time. So in this question, we have uh, four <coughs> projects to do. For, for those projects, we have to invest in, uh, we have to put some uh, money every year. So for example, expansion, if you want to do a planned expansion, first year you have to put, uh, I think, 15,000, and uh, second year you have to put in the 20,000, and so on and so forth. And for each of the projects, there's a, a nice private value. So you are gonna max, you are going to maximize the total net present value. So that's your objective function. And also we have uh, different variables. So in this question, we are considering the binary variable. If you want to invest in the planned expansion, so the variable value is going to be one. If you do not want to invest in the planned expansion, the value will be zero. And Similar thing for the warehouse expansion, buying new machines and uh, new uh, research activities and so on. So, so here we have four different variables. All of them are binary variables. So either the value could be either one or zero. Then we have some constraints. So constraint for uh, so that's a budget constraint for each of the year. So totally for the first year you have forty thousand uh, budget for investment. Second year you have 50,000, uh, third, third year we have 40, and uh, last year we have $35,000. So that means your investment for each year cannot be greater than the available budget. So those are the constraints. Uh, we have the Z variables, we have the, the input there. So I think we finished the model last class. Uh, let me show you all the formula. <coughs> so that's what we had. So right now let's try to solve the model. So if uh self solver and the objective function is here, so that's the place I have, so you are going to select your objective function. So again, let's put the, the formula there. You need to tell the Excel uh, solver how to calculate the, the profit. So that's the object function. Let's select maximize, so we are going to maximize the, the value. In the second one, we have to change the different variables. Here we have four different variables. So you select your different variables, so four different variables there. And for the constraints, we have four sets of constraints. If you want, you can model the first set of constraints. So the use budget cannot, use money cannot be greater than the available budget for each of those years. So if I delete that, so the first selection would be my 
you love it. Again, you have to you have to put the formula there. And <coughs> lambda or equal to, and the constraint is the available budget. So that's the first set of constraints. Then the next constraint is for the descent variable. So we have to make sure all the values or all the descent variables are binary. So we have to let so first thing we have to select all the descent variables, and then you are going to select the BIN. So that, that means uh, it's all there. So that means binary. You are doing the binary there. Uh, binary uh, constraint, or oh, sorry, binary variable. If you select a simplex uh, linear programming model, uh, sorry, the solver, then you can try to solve it.
So that means we have to consider the setup cost for producing each of those uh, products. So for example, if you want to produce the fuel additive, so you have to spend 20, uh, 200 for the setup cost. So if you wanna produce solvent based, so the setup cost is 50 and so on and so forth. And also there's capacity associated with each of the products. The capacity for producing the fuel additive is 50 and the capacity constraint for the uh, solvent base is 25. And for the third one, we also have the capacity. So that means um, we have to consider the setup cost. And also we need to add one more decision variable, one, one more set of decision variables for the setup. So if you want to produce the first type of product, the setup, <coughs> the decision variable we can call it setup. So it has to be one. Or if you do, if you do not want to produce the fuel additive, the decision variable's value would be zero. And same thing for the second, same thing for the, the third one. So that's the whole story of the, the example. And of course, we need the constraint for each type of material because we have the, the uh, resource constraint. For the material one, that, that's a constraint. For two, is the constraint. Three, is the, we have the constraint. So if we go back to the slide, so that's uh, what we had uh, uh, in the Excel. So three products and we those are some of the decisions that we have to make, how a uh, few additives to, to be produced and so on and so forth, F, S, and C. So those are the decision variables we have. We want to optimize those decision variables so that we can maximize our profit. So if we do not consider the setup cost, so here's our model. We maximize our total profit and we have some material constraints. So the material one, Fuels has to be less than or equal to 20, and the second material, third material, and we have to make sure that these variables are positive. So if we do not consider the setup cost, that's that's a whole model we need. But we have to consider the setup cost. So let's model the setup as these variables. So let's use S as a as a binary variable for producing the fuel additive. So if you want to produce this fuel additive, the decision variable's value is one, otherwise it's gonna be zero. So anything <coughs> for the solvent base and the carbon cleaning fluid. So if you want to produce one product, the value is one, otherwise it's gonna be zero. Then let's see what model. Uh, so that's the new model we have. Still we have the profit, but we have to uh, include the setup cost. So if you want to produce the, I think that's, uh, uh, that's the fuel additive. So you have to minus the corresponding setup cost. And if you want to produce the solvent base, you have to consider the setup cost and so on and so forth. So that's the updated objective function. And for the constraints, so that those are the constraints that we had in the previous model, but those three are new constraints. So how do we explain those three constraints? So let's look at this one, the F, so that's the, the tons to, uh, to be produced for fuel additive. So F is less than or equal to 50 times the sign of the same variable. So if you remember the Excel file, so the capacity for producing the fuel additive is 50. So at most you can produce 50 tons of fuel additive. It makes, this country makes sure that the amount of or the tons of fuel additive to be produced has to be less than or equal to your capacity. So if, if you want to, get, uh, to produce the additive, uh, so this variable, as as variable has to be one. So if you consider it one, so you can ignore this one. 
So that means the time to be produced has to be less than or equal to zero. But if you decide to not produce the fuel additive, this SF has to be zero. So that means if we change the values to zero, this side, the right hand side will be zero. So that means the task to, to be produced is less than or equal to zero. So in order to have a feasible solution, this value has to be zero because F has to be less than or equal to zero. So if you decide, if you decide to not produce the fuel additive, this the variable has to be zero. So you, in that way, we can incorporate the setup as a return variable. The same thing for the second one, same thing for the, the third one. And also here, in addition to this non-negativity constraint, we have those three new variables. Those variables are binary variables. So just like what we discussed in the previous slide. So that's, a, that's a, uh, the complete model for this, uh, for this, for this question. So material constraints or resource constraints, and we also have the, the product uh, capacity constraints. And we model the setup um, as a different variable. Then in this model, uh, we need to populate a few things. So first thing is to define your profit. So please uh, enter your profit function. So your profit feed function should include the profit produced by those three products and minus your setup cost. So that's the profit. And also you need to set up your, <coughs> your constraints, material or resource constraints and the product capacity constraints. Let's do this together. Uh, the profit, the profit, the profit. Um, Products um, profit for each uh, of the products times my different variable. How many times have to produce? Okay, I need to minus the setup cost. And the setup cost is maybe for some products. Use that product or not. Profit function. Then the next one is to figure out how how much material one will be used.
If you already finished the return training, please try to use the Excel flower to do some model. And then you have to put the constraints in the in the solver and the objective function and uh, tell the tell the solver the the this environment.
questions? Keep the model. I think um, <coughs> we have some setting problem. Um, if we take the model and every uh, figure out the problem after this time. Um, in this chapter, we have um, let's move on. Um, so we have more examples, but we are not going to cover all the examples. Uh, but there are a few things that I want to point out. Um, so how, how, how do we use binary variables? So there are a few things uh, we can consider. So if we have a multiple choice and mutually ex exclusive constraints, we can use binary variables. And there are two other scenarios. So we from uh, we have n projects and among those n projects we select k of k project out of those n projects. So that's one application. The other application is that uh, we have some conditions. So if you want to work on project B, you have to work on the project A. So if you do not work on project A, you cannot work on project B. So that's uh, another scenario we can use, uh, where we can use the, the binary variable. So multiple choice constraints. So that means the sum of two or more binary variables have to be one. So you, get, you, you are given a few options, but you can only select one of them. So you, you, um, 
model each of the options as a binary variable. So if you add up those binary variables together, it has to be one. And the, mod, the mutually exclusive constraints, we still consider multiple options, but the, if we add up all the different variables, it has to be um, less than or equal to one. Either you select one or you select nothing. So for example, if we consider the busting problem, if we consider um, uh, three projects, so if we consider like a uh, multiple choice problem, so if we add up all those three different variables or binary variables, it has to be one. So you have to select one of them. So that's why we have this type of constraint. So W1 plus W2 plus W3 has to be or if you consider the other scenario, you can select one, but if you are not happy with all of them, you don't have to select. You do not work on anything. So less than or equal to one. It is possible that you, do, you work on nothing if you are not, not happy with uh, all the plans. So it can be equal to zero. So that's the other one. And K out of N alternatives. For example, you have to select we have five projects. Your boss told you to select two. We have to invest in two projects out of five. You cannot do three, you cannot do one, you cannot do nothing. Then you, this is the constraint you have. Or your, bo your boss told you that you, your selection is up to two projects. So less than or equal to two. Equal to two. Or you have two projects, one project, or the different types of constraints. So all of them, all of all of them are binary variable. Uh, conditional and co-requisite constraints. So when we do this is more complicated. You have to figure out um, which what kind of constraint is feasible, which one is not. So if so we have two variables. W means you need you want to expand the warehouse. P means you want to expand the plant. Then let's see all the combinations of the values to see if the solution is feasible or not. So both of them are zero. So that means you should you can choose to expand neither. So you don't want to expand the plant or the warehouse. That's okay. But the condition is that. If if you want to expand the warehouse, you have to expand the plant first. So that means if you do not expand the plant, you cannot expand the warehouse. So this one is not feasible. This one tells us that you do not expand the plant, but you still want to expand the warehouse. This one is not feasible. So we cannot expand the warehouse if the plant is not expand expanded. But the third scenario, you, you, you expand the plant, but you do not work on the warehouse. That's okay. You don't have to work on the warehouse. You can just work on the plant. And the last one, that's also feasible. You expand the plant, and you also expand the warehouse. So that's how we figure out if one combination of the variables is feasible or not. And sometimes we have... Uh, constraint. So if we still talk about the same example, expanding the warehouse, expanding the plant. So some co-requisite is that you either work on both or you work on nothing. So in this scenario, we only have two feasible solutions. The first one, you work on nothing. You do not expand the, the plant, you do not work on the the warehouse. That's okay. That's feasible. Or the other feasible solution is that you work on the plants, you also expand the warehouse. This also works. So that's correct. If you work on if you work on one, you have to work on the other one. So that's a correct. So the middle, the middle ones, one there and there one, they are not feasible. Because we have the correct constraint. So that's those are the different scenarios uh, that we have considered when we uh, use the binary variable. 
and that's uh, that the constraint we have. So in the mathematical formulation, we have to make sure w is equal to b. Either they are both equal, or they are, they are both equal to one or zero. So alternative uh, binary, yes. So that's um, some nodes uh, we have for choosing the optimal solution. So sometimes we have sometimes we have unique optimal solution. Sometimes we have different type, different multiple or multiple optimal solutions. Then if you have multiple optimal solutions, it's better to look at all the options you have. Because in the model, in the math, mathematical model, we cannot incorporate all the factors. So if you consider all the factors, it's gonna make the, the mathematical model really complicated. Then we cannot have uh, the feasible solution in a given time period. So if a solution is unique, let's say we only have single optimal solution. It's also worth to know what is the second best solution. So then you look at the second best solution. If it's not uh, worth, you need to look at how much worth the second best solution is than the, the best solution. Because you are not considering all the factors. But sometimes when you look at the second best solution, in real practice, it may be better than the unique optimal solution. So you have, at that time, after you have the uh, optimal solutions, then it's time to look at the real, real practice. You need to look at other factors. So if the second best solution is very close to the optimal, sometimes it's, uh, the second best solution is more practical. So when, when I was working on a project with a manufacturing facility, when I, when I was doing the scheduling, the optimal solution is always to schedule people to work on the night shift. Because the, in Arizona, in Tucson area, they are using the demand <coughs> response program for the electricity. So you know, during the peak time, the, the day during the day or the evening hour, the, the, the demand for electricity is really high. That means if you work on that time, the, the, electricity, the electricity bill is really high. But everyone is working during the daytime. So if you want to put everyone in the night shift, theoretically, it's the optimal solution. But how many people want to work on the night shift? Probably not so many. So that's why that's a time to look at other factors or you look at the reality. Can is that is my solution feasible in real practice? So probably in real practice, you are not going to put a lot of people in the night shift because it, it doesn't work. People are not going to to look, not not going to work during the night time. So that that's why we have to look at uh, other options. Okay. So that's the whole chapter thirteen. We were discussing the integer linear programming. So I will, pro uh, I will create a folder. So on Blade View, please submit the three files you worked on because I, I need to um, use your file to check what happened uh, in doing the optimization uh, process. I need to figure out uh, the second file. So let me create a folder so that you guys can submit your file. a folder called class exercise on November 19th. Please submit the three files that we worked on to this folder. I will, uh, I will download some of you guys' uh, 